Hi guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. It is now 12.15 on Tuesday, April 4th, 2017. I make a note of that because I'm about to get a lot of hate mail. I get a lot of hate mail every time I open my mouth, but I get especially get a lot of hate mail every time I do something like this. This is an antique player piano. We're going to autopsy it. And the first 50 comments that you will see below are people who are like, You could have saved it! It was a piece of art! It was history! It was special! How could you deface such a day? So I've done an experiment. For the past 24 hours, since yesterday, I posted over a dozen pictures of this in detail, cleaned it all up because we had to get it ready for, for part of pre-production, posted over a dozen pictures and said, Anybody who wants to buy this, 500 bucks, that's it. Take it home. 500 bucks cash, take it home. Not one person bid. I had a whole bunch of people complain of like, Aah! not one person bid. So I dropped the price all the way down to 200 bucks hour by hour over the course of the past day. Not one person bid. So think about that before you comment below with the many ways in which I am a horrible person for destroying history and killing this beautiful instrument. Nobody wanted it. Lots of people wanted to complain about it. Nobody actually wanted to do anything about it. If you see a problem in the world that offends you so much that you feel the need to write pages about it on the internet, take five minutes, get off your butt, and actually do something to change it. In the meantime, let's take apart a piano and learn about the inside. I'm killing art. <laughs> I'm going to do, yes. Ooh, I get to use the big screwdriver right off the bat. Not only are we killing art, we're killing childhood memories. Life's a lot brighter and happier too because of thoughtful people like you. Really? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, there's a, there's a few, we got a birthday card with, I think that's mice. We've got sympathy for flowers and with many thanks. There you go. And we, oh, there's another one. And we've got a cat. None of these are actually signed or have anything written on the inside. And the Dairy Queen Blizzard of 98 Instant Win Game. <laughs> a 1991 notice to Medicare patients concerning non-covered services. <laughs> a Band-Aid. It's sterile, though. Mm. So it's legit. And... Instructions to a patient. This piano belonged to a woman named Mary, who is on Medicare and apparently not doing so good. Is there only one in there? I have three. You have three? Oh, I see them. They're covered under guns. Little brass screws. Yeah, first thing I'm doing is just getting it so that we can see the major part of the piano. You good? There, now we can see things. Cool. Actual ivory keys. Everything works as far as the basic piano functions. And this is a regular upright piano that happens to have a bunch of extra bits, mainly this setup here. This is a player piano, and it's kind of cool. 
Um, if you want to get into exploring player pianos, go back in the history, go, go like the technological history, go all the way back to the Jacquard loom, which is where this idea really began. That is binary. It's one of the simplest forms of programming that exists. We have zero, which is just the paper, and then a one, which is a hole in the paper. This simple concept of holes in things is what gave us IBM solving the problem of the national census, the Jacquard loom, all the way up to the cell phone in your pocket today. This is where it all began. Now, the way this works is this is a program. In this case, it's for music. So when there's a hole here, that allows a note to be played. And the way that note is played is, is there a crank or something? Oh, OK. So we have the paper on top, which I think is the supply reel. And then this is the read head here. This is where the program's actually read. You can see there's a row of holes here. And as the paper goes by, and it gets taken up by the, the take-up reel on the bottom, as the paper goes by the holes, this allows air to be sucked in through a vacuum system. So this, where air gets sucked in, a note gets played. And there's a transposer down here, which allows you to shift that a little bit left or right. So think of this like adjusting bass to treble. If you shift it this way, it plays everything a little bit lower. If you shift it this way, it plays everything a little bit higher. And that physically moves a set of holes. Beyond that, once this triggers a set of valves inside, and the valves allow the individual mechanisms to be activated through the system. So we've got three little blowers here. This is a little triple bellow setup working with that. Now these could be being used for pressure or vacuum, and different parts of this work on pressure or vacuum depending on where you are in the system. So do I want to give you that yet? I think we can get the whole thing up, but we're going to get a ton of hose with it. But let's grab the big screwdriver and give it a shot. I get to use a giant screwdriver. There's going to be a ton of stuff connected to this, but. Giant hose. Pipe's so brittle. Yeah, I, I have a feeling all the, the old pipes are going to break. Hey, mm. gloves. Mm. You and me. Thank you, sir. This is like a spring mount in here. So this is a, this section that we're taking out is the Pratt Reed Pneumatic Player Action. It's a Model M, scale is 406, style is 72, and the serial number is 6340 space 2. And it's made by the Pratt River Player Action Company in Deep River, Connecticut. Now, Batman and I are gloving up because a lot of the pipes in this machine are made of lead. Plus, there's all kinds of creepy, nasty, buggy things living in here. So, you think we can just lift that up? Maybe. Do we want to, or do we want to, like, take this apart? Because this is kind of cool. During the 24 hours that we were doing this, somebody commented on a thing saying we should take this mechanism mm -hmm. and make it work. Don't. What do you, oh, OK. Make this mechanism work with a musical Tesla coil. That would be cool. I think that would be neat. And it's worth saving this enough to give that a shot. Um, let's get the long, skinny screwdriver. And let's take out these on the bottom so that we keep the mounts. No, I should keep that there, because I can take the whole thing out intact, and then might be able to make use of this. Um, now, I'm going to take this box off now, because I don't want to screw it up. Because that's really the heart of what we want to keep. 
and it's just four little short screws that hold it in. And your side's way easier to get out than mine. Okay, so I've got this totally free. We're disconnected there. Oh, it's totally free except for the massive amount of tubes that all go into the back of it. These are all lead, aren't they? Yep. Let's just cut them out. Okay. So here is the piece we, oh, no, there's still something. I got a thing, hang on, I'll unscrew it. Batman, hold that a second. Is that a leather washer, or leather nut? Come off. There we go. All right. I have the part. <sighs> we want to save these eventually, but we can take this unit out at this point. So this, just disconnected from that and removing it. Oh, that sounded bad. There. All right. So what do we have here? Because this is, this is the player bit. All right. 180. And we'll set it up here. So this, that's totally good for it. So this has a whole bunch of little air bits. And I'm guessing they work under vacuum because if you suck the air out of there, that'd push that up. And when that pushes up, that'd push one of these up. So that's how it works. It pushes up on those. And this is, yeah, they're all routed. But, and this is just a really big manifold. Yep. That's really cool. So this. That's your air motor. I got I to gotta try something, Batman. I just got to know. Let's see if this will work. <laughs> OK. Yeah, it's not, that's not, oh God, oh, yeah, this is how we get anthrax. <laughs> In 2017, Chris Bowden reintroduced cholera, anthrax, and dysentery to Michigan. Okay, so the way this worked was you've got the air pump down there from the, and those are just bellows cranked by feet. Those, this was an air motor here, which turned all the cranks and handled feed, speed, all that jazz. That activated the, the holes in the thing. The holes in the thing admitted air in. That air controlled the actuation of things in the manifold, which moves these, val or these little bags. So under vacuum, these pull up. So it all works off vacuum. So these pull up. And when this pulls up, it moves these here, which is in the middle of the piano mechanism, to move the hammer. This must be a mute. Yeah, OK. All right, so let's set this aside. So that's the basics of the player piano. It's actually really simple. There's just a lot of like a piano, it's a really simple mechanism repeated 88 times. So let's dig into this real quick and cover the inside, because this is, now we're into just a basic piano, which we've kind of covered a bit in the past, but we have learned through a lot of trial and error that autopsying a piano is a nightmare. Give me, I can just do it by hand. All right. 
You think that whole thing will come out in one? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you have a little connection on your end? Yeah, you do. Look where my hand is. Undo the leather nut. And then you can slide the mechanism apart. You ready? I got it. I got it. Ah. So we have this mechanism, which is here. Let's let's turn this around so I can see the back. So this gives us the hammers, and these are mutes. Or dampers, I'm guessing they'd probably be called. Yep. There's no mutes on the upper frequencies. All right, let's set this aside over here. We're, let's go over that way. <laughs> now we want to get this piece out. I found a buried screw in the dust. You're going to want this. More. Whoa! We found stuff. There's secret controls in a hidden compartment. I didn't even know that was there. All right, in here we have to play and rewind. And then this is a tempo control here. Soft treble, soft bass, and pedal. Oh, we're into those? Here, I'll need that. Mine's too big. Hey, Batman, mm -hmm. when we're done with this, save these three hinges. can pull out the individual keys. Now the ivory part of the keys, when you hear about ivory piano keys, they, they don't make piano keys out of ivory anymore. They did for a long time. And the actual ivory is just a thin veneer right here. This is a piece of ivory glued in place. And we'll see if we can recover those, because that is a thing. Let's uh, put these in a bucket or something. Where do you want to put them? Make a stack on that for now. All right, cool. Now, keep in mind, everything you're seeing us take apart was made without the use of CNC machines and stuff like that. And this is very repetitive and all very exacting. The manufacture of a piano is a really big deal. And it takes a ridiculous amount of time. It takes a lot of people, all of whom are skilled artisans. Like, there are people who spend their entire lifetime doing nothing but making these. Like, there are people who have spent their entire lifetime mastering the art 
of making the row of actual keys. There are people who have spent their entire lifetime doing nothing but making the castings for these. Like that's, that's a person's whole life, and not just one or two people. Like this is a thing. Um, an excellent resource for learning more about how pianos are actually made. There is an amazing video. I think it was done by the BBC. And uh, if we can find it, I'll, I'll make sure there's a link below for it that goes through the history of how they manufacture Steinways. And a lot of the processes are very similar. Now, a Steinway, of course, is made to a much higher standard than this thing, but the basic idea is the same. Now, for those of you that don't play the piano, the white keys are the main notes. The black keys that I'm taking out right now are sharps and flats. So when you hear of something like D flat, that's right here. This is, I press it expecting something to happen. <laughs> this, this is D flat right here. You can have D flat. Flat is this. No, I'm looking at it backwards. This is sharp. That's flat. Flat means uh, lower. Sharp means higher. And I'm facing this the wrong way. So yeah. Big strings, low notes. Little strings, high notes. There. Oh, these are way easier. The straight ones? I'm going to get so many comments for that. Yeah, there's a lot of gross in here. Cote attractions. Save that. User. Do we want to shot vac this before we go any further? Just take a minute and hit this with a shot vac because more than a couple mice have made their lifetimes in here. This whole panel should just pop right out. Here. Watch. Now bring it down. Yep. yep. There, take that right on out. Batman. Yeah. I'm bored. Thankfully, we have a tool for when it gets boring. That's loose. You know this is like three sizes too big for me, this particular sledgehammer. So I grabbed it for Oh, okay. Now what's holding it? There's probably a support in the middle here under well, look, Let's look and see. That's one way to do it. Hey, 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 let's look. Oh, hey, I found it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's that big piece of metal right there. I bet that's what's holding it up. Also, check these out. Yeah, those are your main bellows. Maybe. Yeah, but the bellows do something I didn't think. The bellows work in vacuum. They're opening. I think the whole thing works on vacuum. Instead of having a pressure component and a vacuum component? Uh, yeah, don't let it fall on my head. I'd appreciate that. Uh, 
wow. We're going to real screwdrivers because the screws are really tiny. Which is surprising for what they are. All right, now see if that moves. Do that again. Oh, found it. There's two screws in the back. But if you do that again, they're gonna come right out. See, one's out, the other one's out. Now it's just some mechanism bits. So something just occurred to me. If you're playing this and you're using the bellows system, they totally occlude the actual pedals for playing the piano. So you can't, you can't do both at the same time. It still generates a vacuum. Now what is that? over there. The little box. Oh, okay. It's, so that's actuated by the switch through the linkage and does the thing. We're now down to the harp. We're staying. At, I'm not taking one of those apart again. We shot a video a long time ago of taking a piano apart. And we got down to this part. And we didn't know when to stop. We're like, we're gonna take the whole thing apart. I ain't ever doing that again. But this is the actual harp. This is a big piece of cast iron. This isn't bronze. This is a big piece of cast iron that is spray painted bronze. This is all of the things that actually make the sound are right there. So we have now explored all the way into a player piano. All right, so we've got the tracker. Well, this is the tracker and its whole assembly. This is collectively referred to as the automatic tracking device. And what it is, and this, this is where things get kind of cool because we get to dig into this. So. We did a video where we talked about how the magnetic fields work on a piece of magnetic tape, right? And how they get moved across the head, and as the tape moves by the head, it reads the analog signals. Cool. Same thing, kind of, except this isn't analog signals. This is digital-ish signals. They're not really analog because it isn't a continuously changing waveform. It's either on or off. Each one of these nodes exists in a binary state. If it's on, there's a hole in the paper. If it's off, there's just paper. And it works through this. This is the reed head in tape player parlance. But here, uh, 100 years ago, they called a tracking bar, I think. Yep, this is the tracking bar. And what this does is it allows air in. It works on a vacuum. And when there's a hole, air can go through, and when there's just paper, it blocks the air. And this goes to, and we're gonna, we're gonna dig into this a bit because I wanna show behind it, but it, basically there's a supply reel here, a take up reel here, and the reed head here. And it works very similar, mechanically, it works very similar to how analog tape does. Now, this isn't gonna load on there. I'm gonna turn this around and you don't get to watch. Because I need to, I need to be able to see to do this. But I'm going to crank that back a bit. And maybe I can get lucky and it'll work enough. See, everybody marveled when I could thread a reel-to-reel -reel in seconds, but a player piano. 
<laughs> I've never done editing on a player piano, so I don't really know. Oh, well, I learned that comes out. Okay. Well, that's how you change the reels. Okay. There. Okay. So now you can see that. This is supply reel, take up reel, read head. And as this one pulls, you can see it goes across. Now, those of you who are music geeks will notice really quickly, if you've ever played in a MIDI sequencer of pretty much any type, I mean, even if you've got time in Fruity Loops, you've seen this before, except instead of up and down, it goes left and right. This, oh, here, I know how to rewind it by hand. I figured that out. Well, I had it figured out, and then I changed something. Why you go the wrong way? There we go, okay. This looks exactly like sequencer steps. And uh, I'm sure there's an, I think they call it, hang on, hang on, what do they call it in a sequencer? It's, oh yeah, the piano roll display. So you can see how that goes by. There is a guy and I'll, I'll have to look it up and we'll put the link below in the, in the description net. But there is a guy who, if you're familiar with Black MIDI, which is where basically people do fractal, mathematical, artistic, I just did a lot of drugs and 50 other reasons to do as many things in a MIDI file as you can. Before that, way before MIDI existed, there was a guy who did things with really heavy math. Like he played a lot around with pi and weird ratios and ridiculous time signatures and stuff like that. And he did black MIDI with p piano rolls, with player pianos. And it's really weird stuff. Some of it's kind of cool, but it's, it's really the absolute limits of the technology. And it probably would have killed this old piano if we'd have tried it. But I'll put a link to that guy, he's kind of cool. So let's take this out. Oh, I figured that out, watch it, yeah. By the way, if you ever have to take the roll out of a player piano, it works like a toilet paper tube. It go, you push in on the one side, and this side over here is spring-loaded, you can see the thing move, and this side just locks onto the cog. So, hi there. So it secretly bothers me that we can't figure out what song this is. So I'm just going to lay it out right there and let you guys get a look at it. And we'll let it go by a little bit. And maybe somebody can comment with what the song is. Because that'd be kind of cool to know. Can anybody figure out what the song is? You should actually be able to work it out, especially if you're handy in MIDI. You could actually program these in. Oh, a big change. Let's, let's see what this is here. What is that? So there's your puzzle to figure out. Comment if you can figure it out. And if you can prove it, if you can like cite sources and prove you've got it right. I will send you the roll. You can win that. There's your contest for the day. So let's dig into this a little bit. Let's see what we've really got here. I'm going to lay this down. Can I just pop that out? Will that come out as easy as the other one? No, of course not. All right, so this is, it's wood or bakelite? I think it's wood. This is painted wood. And we've got all kinds of stuff happening here. I move that, that engages and disengages. And it works, the clutch is on these little pins right here. You can see them down in here. These little pins there, that's the entire clutch. As if those pins bump against each other or not. This one is a follower for the little gear. 
So we can see the little follower gear here, the main gear here. This one engages on the take-up reel. So it's all driven here off this chain. There is, it's hard to see, so looking really close, but right here is a little sprocket wheel. It's a follower with a little ratcheting pole. So this lets, this wants to let this turn this way and then grabs it the other way. So you can do this with it. So that makes it turn and that'll let it just go. Which is weird because when you're turning it that way, you're forcing it off the reel. So it isn't like a rewind thing. Hmm. All right. So let's open it up a little bit. I got to be kind of careful with it because I do want to be able to put it back together someday. Well, that's too big. This might do it. Ah, just barely. Okay. Now we got to be careful because I don't actually want to lose screws this time. Just going to carefully lift this out because behind it should be a whole bunch of tubes. And I'm kind of curious how they interface all the tubes to the tracker bar. So let's take a look. Probably. Oh, well, there's your problem. Okay. I don't have to worry about screwing it up. Somebody a long time ago already did. So I'm going to take the, this, and this is really cool. We saw these on, out in the big room there. Take a look at that. That's a nut. It's made out of leather entirely. Like there's, there's nothing else there but leather. It's a nub of leather with a little hole drilled through it, and they use it in here as a nut, which is really cool. So I'm going to take that out. And now I can lift the entire tracker bar out, and I want you to see this as I do. So it's kind of cool. That's the and you can hear things falling off. That's the tracker bar. And all of the lead pipes that are supposed to connect to it right here don't. There's, and there's a little washer thing. There's a rat's nest of lead pipes. These are cloth covered lead pipes coming out the back. There's a whole tangle of those there. But where they're actually supposed to connect to, they don't. They're all broken off inside. And you can see in there, they're broken off way in the back. So that didn't happen with us. This, this came that way, and that would have been somebody at some point decided they didn't want to hear this thing anymore, so they cut all the stuff out inside, and now we figured out how. But somebody intentionally disabled this at some point in history. So we can set this aside for a minute. So we have a whole pile of little holes, and the way they come out, this is a good way to show it, you can see the holes on top are all in single file. If I roll that over, you can see all the holes down here in single file. And I would imagine there's 88 of them because there's 88 keys on a piano. As it goes through, because these have to be packed so densely, on the back side, they're actually stacked above and below. And it's, it's just every other one. It isn't because they could have done it, white keys on the bottom, black keys on top. But it's, it's all up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So that's our reed head. And there's one really big pipe here on the end that's in line but separate from. I don't know what this is for. But it is a machine readable part. So there's something in the, that's printed in the music that has to do with that. Inside, aside from that, 
it's pretty simple. It's a supply reel, take up reel, and a reed head with a lot of tubes. The rest is all just linkages for speed, direction, stuff like that. It's a, a really simple transmission. I'm going to put this back together real quick because we're done with this. And while, and this is an important thing to remember as you take stuff apart, if you want to put it back together again in the future, put it back together again as much as you can now because you probably won't remember where all the little twiddly bits go. And this was just an extra piece. I'm not worried about that. You go there. A funny thing is, this bolt threads into this bar on the tractor bar, and it actually threads into there. So what is the purpose of the little piece of leather? Because it's not really strong enough to be a lock washer. It's not putting any real force on it. Is it decorative? Is it to control vibration? Is it a bumper for something else that isn't here in this particular subassembly? I don't know. Now I put this back up here, and this back up here. So this is a stupid screwdriver where the grip bit slides. Like, there's a spinny part on the bottom for like doing precision stuff, but this is a grippy part, and the grippy part slides easily. Such is the quality of modern day craftsman tools. Who aren't a sponsor, and I'm okay with that. Okay, so that's all together, and we can see that this bar here, the reason for this linkage is for the transposer. In normal range, it should be here, and that's the center, and you can see it transposes high to low. So if I, want to, if I want to shift this low, I can pull this little lever out, and if I push it over this way, now you can see this is rigidly mounted, this piece slides, and this gives me a very long lever to move. So if I pull that out, and I'll just move the lever here, you can see. But watch this. Watch this in, in reference to a fixed point, like sight right here or something, and you'll see the whole thing moves. Now that's a big deal because you have to take into account what has to happen for that to work. All those tubes... <laughs> connect off the back here. You can see in there, you can see all the little tubes. So those all connect off the back. So those all have to be a flexible connection. Maybe over its 100 year lifespan, because it's lead, um, does lead work harden? I don't know. But it's a metal, so it probably does to some degree. Moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, maybe they just started breaking off. That could have been how it died. So there is our look at the tracker assembly, the automatic tracking device for a player piano. And now we get to go into the next part. All right, so this is the pneumatic player action. Now we've got, we, we've gone through the tracker, which is a big part of that. But from the tracker, the, all those, th those tubes that stick out the back, they go down and that's these, this is the other end of all those tubes. So we have this here, which I'm pretty sure is an air powered and motor. Okay, this is an air motor. Because you have down below the big pump pedals and that's your vacuum generator. So these, they pump air up or vacuum and you've got this really cool crank system. So this powers 
the transmission on the side of our big player system, so the, the tractor head. This gives that all the motion it needs to do stuff. So this really is just an air engine, and if it weren't for the fact that it's completely destroyed, um, I, may, I may resuscitate this to some degree because I think I, I like building a little steam engines and stuff. It's been a thing I've done since I was a kid, and I think it'd be kind of cool to have this thing just just running off a, a vacuum pump could be kind of cool. But you can see the valve system for it. But it's a really simple little three lung engine. That's kind of cool. So that makes this move. This moves the paper. The vacuum feeds down into these. These take it down to here. And this step, so we, we've step by step. This step is there's little bellows down in here. And you can see them folding down there. That's the bellows. So when you admit a vacuum to one of these tubes, so that moves the little bellows. It sucks the bellows closed. And that pushes this up. And it's just repeated 88 times. So that's this mechanism. It's really simple but it's repeated so many times that it gets unimaginably complicated. And that's a recurring theme through a piano, is it's really simple, there's just a hell of a lot of it. So pianos and mixing consoles, that's what they have in common. And now we go on to the next part. All right, so this part is the actual hammer assembly. This is pretty much exactly the same as what you'd find in a regular upright piano. And all it is is a whole series of little levers to do exactly this. Now it's hard to see, so I'm going to keep doing this really slow and maybe we can get a good close up shot of it. But what this is doing, have you ever watched a little kid play the drums, like a little kid that doesn't know anything about drums? What they do is they take They take a stick and they just hit it, right? And they hit like this. And this is how people that don't know anything about drums play the drums. They just hit things with a stick. And that doesn't actually work. What you need to do is hit it and bounce back off like that. Just hitting it and holding it there eh, kind of works for a bass drum, but that's about it. For any kind of real drum, it's a hit and you'd let it rebound a bit, OK? This does the same thing. A piano is a percussion instrument. It's a chordophone, but it's still a percussion instrument. All right, so let's take a look here. We've got the hammer on top, and we've also got the damper down here. This is a damper that just rests. These all rest normally just chilling against the strings. Otherwise, without this, and you can try this at home. Uh, on the bottom of your piano, you've got three pedals. When you push one of them, all of these will raise back a little bit, and it unmutes all the strings. It's the sustain pedal. And if you press any one key, you'll hear all kinds of sounds coming out of other keys because they're going to vibrate in resonance with the one key. It's, it's, you get into overtones and harmonics and fundamentals, and there's really cool math. And go learn about Pythagoras. He's a cool dude. But what we care about is when you press the thing, the first thing that happens is it pulls us back. So we're going to actuate this through a whole cycle really slow. The first thing that happens is it pulls back the damper. So now the string is open and can make noise. The second thing that happens is the hammer for that string comes down and it hits. And right there is where it hits. And it'll actually come out a little bit further because it's going to move with some speed when you, when you push it like that. But this happens too fast for us to really see. So it goes down. Now watch it really close. I'm not going to move backwards. I'm going to keep moving all the way through the stroke. See how it bounces back just a little bit? Watch this again. We hit, and then we come back. So it's doing that boom, OK? And this hits the string, sets it vibrating, and then gets off it so that it can play the note as long as you want. And then when you let go, this is already out of the way, and we, we don't want to have this go back forward to mute it. So what happens is this little thing down here, as, we, as you come off the key, 
presses back against the string and mutes the string. So the whole process looks like that. And it happens very, very fast. And this is what you're seeing when somebody's playing a piano, is you see all the little hammers move. You're supposed to go back, dude. You gotta, you're having some issues there. But you found it eventually and we're proud of you. And you can see that all the hammers, this is a good example here because we have one hanging down. The hammers inside have a wood core with a sharp edge and then there's a hard felt inner area, the purple, and then the yellow is a softer felt and then there's just a layer of gunge on the outside from 100 years of dust. But these are shaped very specifically to provide very specific actions as it hits. And that's why if we go down on this end, the base register keys are really fat and big and they've got a big giant wood wedge. And then the upper register keys don't even, we don't even, where do we, where do we lose? Okay, right about, yeah, here we can still see there's a hair thin layer of the purple. And then the next key up, so pretty much the top octave. Yeah, just about the top octave. There is no purple in there anymore. It's just felt, it's a little tiny beak and that's it. I don't know what this part is called. Everything in a piano has a special name that's like 300 years old. I'm calling it the beak. This is the beak here. So the keys are shaped very differently when you get up to the very high ones to the very low ones. And down on the bottom, we've got this big giant foot here. It's not so much a beak anymore. It's a big foot. So there really isn't much to see for mechanism on this side. I mean, this is where all the action happens. You've got all the dampers and the hammers, but if we turn this around, now you can see stuff happening, okay? And check out this link here. That's the actual mechanism of what's happening in a piano. There's tons of stuff going on. Look at all those levers. So. You can see how this works here. I'll try and get out of the way. So it rests against this little block here on the rebound. And there's little leashes. You can see these here. There's these little leashes right here that keep it from jumping away. There's a lot of stuff going on. This is really incredibly intricate, fine cabinetry, woodworking stuff happening here. And I think it's neat. It's, pianos are fun. But that takes us through all of the fundamental parts of this player piano. And we got to explore a whole lot of stuff along the way. And I want to thank all you guys for hanging out with me and learning about this stuff. So you go find something cool to take apart. Or at the very least, take the cover off your piano, play it, and look inside. There's a lot of stuff going on in there, and it's really cool. I'm Chris Bowden. Thank you for watching. And as always, we'll see you next time.